I think this is my favourite 4321 video to date. Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Welcome to my kitchen and today we're doing another 4321 video which is basically four three ingredient recipes to try one time in your life. Not to be confused with the recently created 123 recipe playlist which is one pan to make three recipes or for you. If you don't know what the concept of this recipe is, and we're getting started straight away because we've got quite a bit to do today, it's basically we should have 12 core ingredients. And for each uh, starter, main, and dessert, I'm preheating my oven to 200C, by the way, fan. What the? <laughs> oh my gosh! We had a roast dinner yesterday. Mrs. Barry made the Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> I didn't realise she just left them in the oven. Okay, we're going to do yet yeah, starter, main, dessert, and drink. Three ingredients each, and today could be one of my favourite ever. Based on your feedback, I'm going to change the rules slightly because I was very harsh on myself actually right at the start of this playlist. As you'll see, I was very restrictive. So things like oil, I counted as an ingredient. So oil, uh, salt, uh, pepper, water to boil, all that stuff before. That was like one ingredient. So now we're going to loosen it up a little bit, but even still, I'll tell you how you can enhance it. So first up, uh, the beetroot, okay? All right, so just giving that a little clean and obviously uh, the actual beetroot colouring is used as food dye. Random fact for you sometimes. Um, but it's really hard to get this skin off right now but if you want to and it's something I normally would do what I would recommend is get some like disposable gloves like that and then peel away otherwise it will look like well it'll look like a Halloween scene all right but anyhow we are going to take uh, those beetroot get a little kitchen towel and just pat it dry look at that love it but they take a long old time to roast beetroot so we're going to get this going quite early on uh. Look, look at the colour of that water. It looks like the water the dentist gives you, doesn't it? I never understood why it was pink. Any dentist want to let me know why? The skins, once they're roasted, they should just rub off nice and easy. So what we'll do uh, is not what I would do in the past, but we're going to change the rules, as I say, because it really does open up a whole world of flavouring and really still three core uh, ingredients in quotation marks. And when I say ingredients, it should maybe be more products. So a little bit of salt. In fact, that was quite a lot of salt. <laughs> This is actually how I roast my potatoes. It might not be the most exciting video, but I'm doing a video on how I make my own homemade baked potatoes. It's like really, I don't know, I'm really over the top with them. There's a certain way I love to do them. Yep, so alongside the beetroot, we're gonna get some tortillas. We are just gonna bake those later on to create some sort of nice sort of dipping tortilla chips, our own homemade ones, which of course we can season in salt and pepper as well. And to go with our beetroot, which we're going to shred, we've got some cream cheese. Now, there's loads of different brands available. That's a garlic and herb one. So many different flavours. They had sweet chilli. They had like a crap black pepper. It's very black peppery today. But black pepper's a great thing. We're going to infuse that all together later on when it's roasted. All those flavours going in there. It's going to be super, super stonking. Yeah, we'll get that going. I always like, I don't know what it is with like tortillas. I love them and I did homemade tortillas, remember that before. Really cool to make your own. Um, I just like ripped the bag open and Mrs. B's like, no, it's got a resealable seal, but yeah. I'm excited today, sorry. What we're gonna do with these tortillas, in fact, let's just do it really rough any way you want. Uh, we just might as well get ahead of time now. Ugh, we're just gonna, in fact, just use the board, yes. There we go. So by sticking two tortillas on top, we've got a nice pile of nice dippable things which we're going to brown and toast with added salt and pepper, but not yet. It's all about the beetroot right now. Well, it is for you. For me, we move on to dessert. Around about a year ago, I did a recipe for Nutella scones based on a cafe that I went to where I'd first discovered them. And I said to Mrs. B, I'm like, one day I'm going to make these and today is that day. And they were stonkingly good. Now this... I have to admit, it's a complete experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I have made in the past scones, not on the channel, just to be my own hobby, uh, scones with lemonade, okay? Flour and lemonade, that bonds together and you bake it. It can make a scone, but it needs a sort of base to it as well to support it. And that base is gonna be Nutella today, or Nutella. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna do our best, and that's all we can in life, folks. We're gonna just do our best. Uh, 300 grams of flour. So it's normally three parts flour. So if we go for that, we're gonna go for 100 ml of lemonade. So if it's three cups of flour, you wanna do one cup of lemonade and one cup of Nutella. So about 100, maybe 120 grams of that. All right, I'll type it up. It'll make sense. But let's see if it works. Oh! 100 ml. Mm. But 
I say the great thing about this is you can add more flour if you need to. We will do any way to help dry it out when we're rolling, but just keep a lot to one side. It's basically your savior. So I'm not even gonna make a well. Okay, I'm not even gonna sieve the flour, we're just gonna go rough. But we won't get too excited and shove the Nutella in just yet. We get rid of that lemonade cloud and you can see it's starting to absorb in there, all right? Shake what your mama gave you. Good girl. So, 100 grams of Nutella. Yeah, that's half the tub like that. And of course, as this is one of our free ingredients, if these scones work, damn right we're gonna wedge it in. My ear is nearly in the bowl. It's not, all right? I'm gonna serve them with the Nutella in there. Oh. All right, what I'm finding, folks, is you don't actually need to add any more fluid to it. You've just got to kind of knead it through. And if we don't make it perfectly, we might end up with marbled scones like that. I'm not sure. I might actually keep it like that because that looks blooming awesome. But as you push it through more and more, it does spread. But I, do you know what? I quite like that. That's pretty cool. Actually, let's stick with that. What have we done? I'm gonna go fairly thick. I mean, with the self-raising flour, it will rise. Okay, all right. So I can probably reuse this and get another two there. But look at that, we're making marbled scones. Obviously, this is the British style scones as well. Can we just agree that no matter what happens, that they look pretty darn awesome indeed. Marbled scones. I mean, I've never heard of that before. Have we just fluked this by accident? Have we created a viral sensation? But they go in for approximately uh, 15 minutes normally. Uh, and this one, we will start to turn the heat down now by about 20 degrees. Otherwise, the tortilla will you'll put it in there and it'll basically burn. And the other thing I should have done before slicing it is uh, put oil, salt and pepper on it. Unfortunately, now I need to do that individually with all the triangles. <laughs> so much easier if I didn't slice it yet. But again, I wasn't really going to do this, but you know, this is these extra rules that I can do now. Just a little bit of oil, a little bit of pepper. You see that grip into it? Both sides and the same with an unnecessary salt bay. So after much unnecessary salt baying and peppering and all that stuff, we've got a nice selection now. I'm gonna get the same tray out of the oven with the beetroot on there, because even if some of the oils and the juices from the beetroot hit that, ha, huh, you could stain it as well. Do you see how we just make it up as we go along? And just, that's what it's all about. And on that subject, those scones are looking phenomenal. Oh, 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 look at that rolling around like a tennis ball. Lush. Right, uh, let's try and find some space for these. But those scones, folks, let me tell you, they have puffed up, they've held their shape. All we want to do is get them nice and firm now. You probably can't hear that because of the oven, but the beetroot is making the sound of a small bird. Let's get it back in the oven for about 10 minutes. Oh. 15 minute timer has just gone off on the scones. They should be done. Hey, oh. hey, oh. Remember, they're gonna be a little bit delicate when they're hot, so don't move them straight away especially with the Nutella in there, it's gonna be warm. Let these cool down. They've got a good height on them. They look, I love the marbling. My word, we've done it. Oh, speaking of done it, oh, literally, they should be done too. Oh, shabba dabba ding dong. Wow. That's what we want, just slightly browned. Nice little bit of puffage in there as well. We all like that. Flet the pepper, the intensity of that. Oh, the flavor's gonna be so good. These need to cool before we whiz them up. They'll be softened. We need to get that skin off. Welcome to the O2 messaging service. The person you are calling is unable to take your call. Please leave your message after the tone. To re-record your message, key hash at any time. Hiya, uh, it's me, your husband. Just wondering why you left a whole tin of Yorkshire puddings in the oven. Uh, we're going to make a very quick drink now, which to be honest, could cool down and not be as amazing as it would do fresh. Uh, first of all, you can do this in the microwave, but I'm just doing it in the stove. Uh, but with the, with the sugar and a little bit of butter, that will drive and give you a real sort of like butterscotchy, almost caramelizey vibe as well. Very nice, very naughty. In fact, all we do for this is warm that milk up. Do keep your eye on the milk. Bad jokes, uh, because it can burn the pan if you don't stir it and you overheat it too much. So we are gonna add the other ingredients off the heat and I'm just quickly gonna clean it up. And just keep it stirring, all right? Nice and warm. Speaking of warm to one side, these are just about non-nuclear now that you can touch them. So the skin 
it's a little bit wrinkly like you've been in the swimming pool too long it will come off all right i changed my uh spoon for a whisk but it was a whisk worth taking so basically we've got the milk nice and hot it was foamy we can whisk it like this oh but this will help us adding these things oh lush but we're going to shimmy in the brown sugar the dollop of butter <laughs> keep it warmed serve it immediately right for the final one this is a pan oh so for this last one is a recipe i want to do for a very long time and there are much more detailed videos on youtube about this i think it's called cassio e pepe we're gonna go for that uh which hails from rome and actually translates to cheese and pepper that's basically the three ingredients is pasta so spaghetti cheese and pepper but apparently you've got to get the ratio right and i've been sent this really cool link for someone who makes a paste uh so rather than just dumping the cheese in letting it melt apparently making a paste with the cheese and the pepper which i found really interesting uh can help and we put it in water as well so that's what the uh, water simmering that was from the milk this one is just simmering uh, just to bring up so we can get our spaghetti cooking but let's look at the cheese and the pepper all right so apparently we're using romano cheese which originates in rome but i forgot we haven't finished the beetroot yet we're very nearly there let's go back so here is the beetroot looking a little bit jurassic parky but there look see how the skin does just peel off really nice and easily now ha huh. all right so what we can do now oh my gosh is just especially this bigger one that is a gigantic beetroot and you can still see <laughs> look at the heat that's coming off of it it's going in with that flavored cream cheese which seems like ages ago boom this is going to help loosen it even more so Ugh. the cream cheese should be at the bottom oh ho, ho, ho. it's going to be a super smooth roasted beetroot dip okay so back to that pasta we need to apparently freshly grate this nice and fine so that's what i'm doing this is a big 170 gram block so there's no cream, no olive oil, anything like that going in here. The pure flavor is from the cheese, the pepper, and the pasta, and some of the pasta water. And that intensity is coming from the pepper mainly. So freshly cracked pepper apparently too, and a good tablespoon of that. So this might take me a little while, but that's gonna give it the heat, isn't it? And I guess we can use more cheese and pepper to season it, but <laughs> the seasoning is the sauce. So now apparently we add cold water to make it a paste. This is the technique or the trick that someone's told me on the recipe I've been sent, all right? Using the cold water prevents a clumpy separated sauce since the cheese won't start melting until it hits the hot pasta. Okay, so that is some ice water, uh, 80 mils of that. And what we do is add that in there and we're gonna mix it together. This is strange. But then what it does is tells me to press it against the bowl like that to get that pasty sort of, there you go, yeah. Looks a bit fluffy there, a bit mashed potato-y, but when you press it against there, you can see, okay, I don't know what this is gonna be like. I don't know if I'm gonna do this, cause it's like a full pack and I never really do it with this, but someone once taught me, if you twist it like that, hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, the pasta should cook fairly evenly. That water was just coming to a simmer. Uh, so we're gonna cook that to al dente, uh, and the paste is just <laughs> sat there. Woo apparently oh we'll pour this into a big old bowl oh let's <laughs> put that on the, the hot ring oh, okay oh look at that paste get that right on there what we do is we work it together vigorously now with two forks like this and that's going to hydrate it the heat is going to loosen up that sauce should go creamy in a minute oh can you see that it's starting to happen that's amazing but apparently also to get it going, we can add, wow, this has gone from like naught to 100 miles an hour, <laughs> like a tablespoon, just at a time, apparently just a couple of tablespoons of that, but oh, apparently it's best served immediately. And you can probably see why, because that's got that gooey, cre oh, I just want to break that down a bit. Yeah, that's what we're doing, those clumps there. Oh my gosh, this is lush. <coughs> this is the most unorganized scene I think I've ever filmed. There's literally strings of cheese in it. Look at that. <sighs> Pepper on there. And I'm gonna grate some more on there too with the heat of the pasta. Just melting that on. Oh my goodness. But it does say best served immediately. So 
That is unbelievable. Creamy and buttery, which obviously must get that from the cheese, but you've got the heat. Almost like a weird fruitiness of the pepper as well. I don't know, is pepper fruity? But it's, it's um, so good. Every thread, every strand of the pasta is like drenched in this intense peppery cheesy sauce. That is phenomenal. I'm gonna cry. Hey, they look amazing, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. Just a blob of Nutella. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, you beautiful thing. And then we pour the milk that I just freshly warmed up. <sighs> look at this, huh? Look how good that looks. Ah, oh. I might be lying if I said that I didn't eat a whole plate of that that I just served up <laughs> off camera. That is possibly one of the nicest pastas I have ever, ever tasted. Not just made, like ever taste. That was phenomenal. And I'm gonna save it for Mrs. B, otherwise she'll kill me. So I don't need to taste that. We'll go for the drink. Oh, warming, sweet. That little butterscotch vibe in there needs a little bit of that cinnamon on there or something like that, just to give that extra autumnal vibe. But something delicate and kind about it, like me. And we've got our starter, the dip, our seasoned tortillas, salt and pepper infused, and this. I don't know what this is gonna taste like. Oh. There's a calmness to it, which the cream cheese brings with the flavoring as well, but then there's the intensity of the roast, of the beetroot, but of course you could play around with that and adapt that, add more beetroot in if you want it more intense. Oh. And um, <laughs> you're not finished with this thing. Mm. You normally have one half at a time. It's polite. I don't care. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think this is my favorite 4321 video to date. This is so, like, all of this is amazing. But on the playlist to date, we've done some other crazy ideas. So do check it out, have a bath and put on your sweat band for that. Don't forget to subscribe for regular videos and food fun. And I'll see you next time. Wow. <laughs> Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Those of you that follow me on Instagram will see that Phoebe's made this as an art project. She had to make something giant, and obviously she did giant food. We did do a giant Oreo years ago. I literally keep walking past it and want to eat it. It's amazing. Fair play.